It is Friday, August 14th. The time is 12.53 p.m. and the temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. I'm here in downtown Toronto in front of the Eaton Center. Currently walking west on Dundas Street. And the plan for this walk is to head across the street and walk through this complex right here, known as the Atrium on Bay. I'll walk through the concourse level there where there's a food court and some other retail shops. And then I'll pass through the Eaton Center. I briefly walked through the Eaton Center on the first day of the Stage 3 coronavirus reopening. But I thought it would be interesting to come back and take another look. This is a weekday afternoon, so I wouldn't anticipate it being overly busy. And it's worth noting that the Eaton Center is the busiest shopping mall in North America. And from what I've heard, a lot of the retail stores there are struggling quite a bit. So it'll be curious to see if everything's open and just how busy it is. So this is Bay and Dundas right here. Just to the south of here is City Hall. There's a look east down Dundas Street. There's Muji, one of the flagship stores in the Atrium on Bay. This is a retail and office complex. The Toronto Coach Terminal is across the street, as is Uncle Tetsu's Japanese cheesecake, which is quite popular in this area. I've just got to slide my mask on. If I can. There we go. Masks are required indoors in the city of Toronto. So we should be hitting the food court right now, which would normally be quite busy. It's 12.57 on a weekday afternoon. There's a lot of office workers and the like in this area. Virtually no lineup at the McDonald's. Subway is open, but it looks like The teriyaki experience and mustachio, which is an Italian food outlet, food outlet, are closed. And I'll just head over to the other side where the arrows are directing me. This place opened in 1981.
on the Bay Street side, it replaced a, a hotel that was known as the Ford Hotel. It is home to the Ontario Lottery Gaming Corporation, so if you strike it big in the lottery, here's where you would come to stake your claim. That's Spring Rolls, one of the Asian fusion restaurants here in the city. That particular chain kind of kicked off a whole trend. I I think going back to the late 90s, most of the locations seem to have disappeared, but that one still is around. And if I continue this way, this will lead us into the subway station and the Eaton Center. But I think it might be more interesting to head outside and then enter the Eaton Center from Young and Dundas. There's the OLG Prize Center. I've always wondered if people hang out around there to watch winners go in and follow them in. So this will lead us on to Young Street. where when I'm done filming this video, I'll attempt to do a live stream. I don't know how this place would normally look on a weekday afternoon, but I think it would be fair to say it's nowhere near as busy as it would normally be. And this is Young Street I'm heading south on. That's Dundas Square across the street. It's not uncommon to see a lot of buskers and religious preachers on this corner, but I guess due to the low volume of pedestrians, it's not really worth their while at this time. I started this walk just north of here on that street there, which is Dundas. So the last time I came into the Eaton Center, I went down to the food court. So if I head in that direction, that'll take me into the Nordstrom department store.
Please use every third step. There's the subway station, which sits on the north end of the Eaton Centre. On the south end is Queen Station. There's a look down into the food court. Maybe at some point on this walk, I'll circle back and head down there and take a look. No promises. I really just wanted to take a look around the Eaton Center. It's quite an unusual time period we're in. Clearly not everyone can follow the markings on the ground. It is a Friday afternoon, but it's quite unusual to see the busiest shopping center in North America so empty. David's Tea doesn't even appear to be open. I can't imagine, given the rents here, that any if or many, if any at all, of these stores are turning a profit right now. This part we're walking through used to be the Eaton's department store. But when Eaton's left, it was extensively renovated on this end. Nordstrom occupies the space above this.
That's the James Street and Albert's Way exit. That'll take you past Old City Hall and Young Street on that side. into the Apple store. If you're not a fan of getting value for your money, this is the place to shop. And I think that's a new location for them. I thought they used to be one floor above. So what I'll do is I'll head down to the level below this and walk across that and then I'll come up to the third floor here. And I can take that bridge, if it's open, and head across to where Saks Fifth Avenue and the Bay are. I remember coming here when I was much younger and much like Yorkdale Mall and Sherway Mall and even Square One, since that time this mall has gone significantly up market. You used to be able to find joke stores and a lot of much lower cost clothing retailers and things like that, but times have changed. It seems as if this mall is constantly under a state of renovation. There used to be a movie theater on the Dundas Street side. I remember seeing the movie She's All That there, a Freddie Prince movie. But then they opened up the AMC across the street, which later became a Cineplex Odeon when AMC left. This store is recent to Canada. It seemed to pop up here in the last few years. It's good to see it here. It's kind of been a go-to store for me when I'm traveling overseas. It's a good place to get low-cost items like socks that are of decent quality. at Spring. This is a low-cost shoe retailer. When I worked in the financial district, I'd usually cheap out and get my dress shoes from there. Microsoft store is not open, although I've heard they're 
exiting the retail business. They'll still have their online stores. I've actually bought a laptop through them and it was a pretty good experience. They shipped it to me and never ended up charging my credit card. And when I called them to ask them, hey, where's the charge? They apologized and sent me $100 in Xbox gift cards and then never did charge my card. So I basically got a free laptop from them. I don't know what more I can do than call them and say, hey, you didn't actually charge me for this thing you sent me. There was a hold put on my credit card when I ordered it, but that disappeared. And the good thing about that was it wasn't a Microsoft branded laptop, but it didn't come with any of the extra junk software that you get when you purchase a laptop from a place like Best Buy. It was really just Windows 10 and nothing else. The Gap used to be located on the floor below here. But they relocated when Sport Check and the new food court moved in. Looks like some kind of hot topic wannabe. Blue Jay store. And it looks like EB Games is now EBX. Kind of surprised that store is even still around. Their American affiliate or parent company, GameStop, is apparently in all kinds of financial trouble. So what I'll do is I'll pop down and we will end up checking out the food court. And then I can head up to the third floor and walk across that and that'll pretty much cover most of the Eaton Center. There is a wing just up these stairs that heads west and that'll take you to Best Buy and Canadian Tire and a few other stores. That was a recent addition when they built the Ryerson University addition. Normally this place would be an absolute zoo at this time. I used to work about seven minutes walking from here in the financial district and I'd come here sometimes between 12 to 2 p.m. and it would be almost impossible to get a table. And that would be on top of having to line up for quite a while. It certainly seems busier than the last time I passed through here, but that was on or during the evening and it was the first day of the stage three reopening, which I think was the first day these restaurants opened up. These chains are mostly typical of Canadian food courts, or at least in the Toronto area. This was my usual haunt, the Bourbon Street Grill. I often get their blackened chicken. A long time ago, there used to be two food courts in the Eaton Center. In this area, 
there was one, and then on the south end, around Queen Street, there was another one. And there used to be an Arby's in this one, if you're familiar with that chain. It was actually one of the few Arby's in Ontario. That's not a chain that's been prominent here. But there was one near my home where I grew up in Mississauga. It was a sad day when that closed. And it was an even sadder day when this one closed, as I was living in Toronto at the time. I know Arby's tends to be the butt of a lot of jokes, but... I'm a big fan. So it looks like most of the tables are spoken for. But again, I'm sure these businesses are all suffering quite dearly still. There's a sport check. Good luck finding a bicycle in there if you're in the market for one. And I was not paying attention to the signs. I was just curious if there was something else around there. Feel free to accuse me of being a lemming. Okay, so there's the way I just went down, so I'll head up two flights of escalators here. Just to get up to the third floor where we haven't been. And it's free. I believe that's a Korean cosmetic shop. I used to see a lot of those everywhere in Korea. Korean cosmetics are quite popular all over Asia, but that trend has seemed to be spreading to North America. says Nordstrom used to say Eaton's. There's the Young Street entrance and this is Trinity Square. Things are decidedly a bit higher end on this floor.
there's a very good chance I'm going to have to replace the audio thanks to that overbearing music back there. Looks like that's a OVO store. So we are back to the Queen Street side of the Eaton Center. We've kind of been bouncing back and forth between the Queen Street and Dundas Street side. And straight ahead is the new bridge that connects the Eaton Center to Saks Fifth Avenue and Hudson's Bay. I think that was put in in 2017. Saks Fifth Avenue is, of course, owned by Hudson's Bay. That's making it a Canadian company. Usually it's the other way around. a so look to the west that's old city hall and the 501 queen street streetcar passing by and i don't normally film in side stores so this might be awkward <laughs> But I believe that's Saks Fifth Avenue on the left. I'm just going to find my way outside of the store. I've been here a few times. You look at a pair of shoes like that and you see that it's something stupid like a thousand dollars. In fact, let's take a look. I was not far off. You certainly have to have more money than you know what to do with to buy a pair of shoes for what will be a thousand bucks with tax. So that floor down there will take you down to the path concourse or the path level. All right, let's just get out of here. There's Richmond Street straight ahead. This is a minefield of copyrighted music. I can't wait to have to edit all this music out. Ugh. That door does not open. Or I'm just incredibly weak. Man, that sun's bright. Here's a look at the newest addition to the Bay Adelaide Center. This is Richmond Street. It's a one-way street that runs parallel to Queen to the north and Adelaide Street, which is a one-way street that runs in the opposite direction, just a block south of here. So what I'll do is I'll just turn north up Young Street here. And then when 
I get to Queen, I think I'll end this video. I'm about to go attempt a live stream. I'll just head up to the Young and Dundas Square to try that. If that worked out, you should be able to find it on the channel. I don't think I'll be deleting it unless it wasn't successful. And there we go, back to Young and Queen. So thanks for watching guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're interested in checking out my Instagram or Patreon pages, there are links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.